Yes. Hello. Welcome back to Arknights. It's been a long time since I've played. Um, not really a long time. I guess it's only been a week. But that's still a week away from the game. So, um, I'm not going to really say much for this one. There is a new event, I was told? Yes. There's a new event. I haven't played it at all yet. And if I want to be able to finish it, I need to actually play it a lot. So... Here I am! Took me a while to get into it, finally. 11 minutes to be exact. A boy cries in his dream. To weather the blizzard, a girl wraps him within her cloak and wipes his tears away. Freezing, gusting, the air screams on. Softly, the Cyclops tells of an epic tale, far, far away. Through the snowstorm seems, her voice comes. The myriad souls calls become harmony with it. The boy's whimpers, the drum of their beat. This dream is bitter cold. Within, the girl seizes a faint breath. She covers the boy's eyes and closes her own. Even now, even here, for them, the bald from a thousand years ago is still playing. A ballad, bald. The ballad from a thousand years ago is still playing. Armies fell upon our home, then I saw from afar. From valleys to hills, our lands they are scarred. The king slaughtered. The myriad souls did lament. Yet one sovereign fell, six heroes rose. They blew the horn, led the fight, faced their foes. Alas, the wanderer's city collapsed. To ruin swift as <coughs> sorry, as the fleeting peace elapsed. When all seemed lost, a black crown appeared. The twins brought hope where dread had reared. Spreads the rift, giving birth to betrayal, an assassin in the heart of the tempest. Then, I saw from afar, a sword to slay the regent king, a spear to pierce the royal ring. Legends ends as justice calls, to righteous fate the mighty's falls. That is how this episode ends. The Cyclops faded into the blizzard of the dreamscape, leaving the child behind her. The boy's own cries grow distant from his ears. He wakes. Whoa. Summer, 1094. That's a cool picture. Is that supposed to be like, a, what is it called? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Outskirts of an abandoned town, Kazdel. That is how this episode ends, Ascalon. My story is over. That is what my people, the Cyclops, the Cyclopes, <laughs> bound for the deep north, saw as they gazed their last of Gazdel. Was that a page from a long lost history? A possible future yet to come? Or plain meaningless gibbering? None knew for the past millennium until they came and fate's rapids begin to narrow into a surer coast course. And now, the fate she saw has drawn upon before our eyes. Who are we talking for? I thought I just got attacked by a cat. Oh, hello, Ascalon. That's a cool weapon. I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you even hear me out. Bright red blood creeps along his mask, trickling down his chest. Ascalon eyes narrows a hair. He's out of luck. You're about to die, so I give you one last token of respect. <coughs> <laughs> Those prophecies never did not you. In all the time we knew each other, no? That's why you will never understand how greedy a soul thirsts to control his fate. Choose better last words. I know you hurry to convene with the Babel members. Babel members. But it's not yet time for you to leave. Look, the catastrophe is near. Uh, funny, I'm curious now. What was it you found within the storm? Step aside. No commission left unfinished. The rule I set myself back when I was at the Scar Market. Alive or... Ah! A dawn-like mist is wound about the Cyclops' neck as Ascalon vanishes behind him, leaving his body to dangle over the cliff's edge. Damn! You ever seen your own end, then? I don't care for prophecies. 
We have that in common. <laughs> but in fact, none of us can outrun fate. Don't you want to struggle out of it? What makes you not? Why can you not? How can you not? Never forget, you have your place in the prophecies too. Whimpering, storming. A plaintive chant rings in their ears. An elegy or over the horizon from the con convalis of the banshees sucked into the storm's eye. Ascalon gives an involuntary sh shudder. She is ice cold from head to toe. An indescribable pain rips from behind her ears down to the soles of her feet. This nameless elegy, this ill omen. Farewell, Kazdel. A single sigh reaches Ascalon. Her hand tightens fast until not even the faintest sound will leave Scar Eye's throat again. And then she lets go. <sighs> Damned fate. I blink my eye. The tremendous figure of the Cyclops becomes no more than a speck below the overhang. The mist scatters to the storm. The shadow of a hood goes with it. All vanishes within the teardrops falling from the cliff. Gasps, rolls of thunder from catastrophe clouds. Whistles as the sand is swept across the barrens. The sound of everything culminates in silence. What a crazy start. <laughs> Londinium. Londinini. Londinium. That was right the first time. Victoria. Now, lift your head, Sarkaz of hers. If you would see. <laughs> if you would still see through the calling she bestowed you, here I stand. Come, step forth. You may avenge her. What's going on, bro? Assassin. My name is stitched onto my clothes. Stitched by Her Highness Teresa's own hands. I can feel it faintly burning right this moment, and I know what that means. The mission she assigned us is over. We'll clash with you no more. The Sark has, uh, the Sark has do not draw on each other before the invader. Honestly, okay, I'm gonna be reading weird. I had to mow the lawn today, and I hit, like, a dust cloud, and I, like, my lungs hurt and stuff, so it's gonna take me a little bit to read through some of this stuff. We pledge our loyalty to you, Regent, so long as you still hold your zeal and earnestness for the Sarkaz. We will trust our lives, you, you with our lives. Even though you nearly ruined all the plans we'd set up in Victoria, should the military commission put us to death, we will be willing to die. As long as it could be bring a better end. And end as she wished. Wished. A moment ago, you were the renegades in chief. All but ready to entomb our plans. How can I possibly believe Manfred? As she wished, you said. Your name, Deathmonger. Jewelry. Julie. Jewelry. <laughs> I will remember it. And I will hand you your final mission. Guards, assassins, mercenaries, survivors of this sea of bloodshed, one and all, you are to enter the mausoleum of kings. You are to re render Victoria's iron heart a scrap. You are to ambush and wipe out every last steam knight. You let us take part in the commission's core plan to enfeeble Londinium? Manfred will take good care of you. There's no chance that we leave the place alive, is there? You're welcome to fight for it. Very well. What's keeping you here? I'm just taking it in. I'm looking at the one who fostered Ascalon. She never rid herself of you. I swear to follow her highness Teresa. And no ink with no inkling that the tale of the mixed blood twins, rewriters of Kazdel's history, would end this way. Let alone that this disposable life of mine had a place in it. Farewell, your highness, Ter Teresus. I take my hatred of you to the grave. Dogs are barking. Rhode Islands. Oh, Babel. Babel. Kazdel. Who the hell are you? Oh! It's the doctor. What's her name? I don't know. Cuss it. Keep going, Kotsit. 
Never, since the day she was born, has this corridor felt so endlessly long to call it. Monitor? Oh, monitor! What the hell? Angry roar. Cough. <laughs> uh, uh, my dame! Do not bury us. Kazdel's soil cannot hold any more traitors. Finish him. I know that. Even left on your own, your step will never falter. Amia, doctor! Anxious crying. System unresponsive. This is... Monitor, cut the door down. Monitor, meltdown. You believe loneliness is yours alone, that you have none of the same kind. Yet, from the day you woke again, we've walked shoulder to shoulder, haven't we? Immortal empires turn to dust. Elder scepters rent in two, rent in two under ancients' rallying cries. Pulses over the sky like a surge. The immutable rhythm of the stars, from resplendent glimmer to dull collapse. Death, rebirth, the all-encompassing cycle. She's never, she's ever so familiar with it. Teresa. It's still one day I'll choose to slow down, to stop in place where I am. When I do, Kaltzit, don't grieve. Keep going. Kaltzit subconsciously searches her memories. Death. Rebirth. The all-encompassing cycle. No. It's not the same this time. Not quite. For the first time, she must bid to the first who could ever converse with her as an equal to her dearest friend. Farewell. Teresa. So calls it. It's time to say goodbye. Amia, doctor. But what the hell? Wait, that's the doctor. I always say one day our wandering is bound to end. One day, the Sarkaz's wandering is bound to end. Now your wandering too has reached its end point. I knew full well this full well this possibility always existed. Sorry. Why? Should have stayed behind. It's my... Dude, this is crazy. Is this the past? Because I believe in Rhodes Island. I believe in Babel. I believe in you. Calls it... I hope the road up roads can be <clears throat> a place you name home. An island you may always return to. Sorry about the dogs. I already did everything I could. I won't harbor complaint for my own end. Babel's mission is concluded, while you and this land ship have only just set its sail. I am not the same kind as you, Kaltzit. I cannot explain away your puzzlement. But I've always been your companion. Then, now, and after. I will always be with you all. Now. Okay, I'll be right back. <sighs> what is this? 64 years ago, autumn, 10, 1030. Scar Market, Kazdel. Let's get a drink real quick. You protect this tag around your neck with your life. You're my precious property, slave. You understand? Sarkoz swearing. You better be worth something. Looks like Matterhorn. Stay here and don't move. You inspect the goods. The slave trader casts a glance at the silent slave behind the mercenary's back, then slightly shakes his head. Where'd you get it? Found him on my way here, dying of thirst and about to become Mangler Chow. Thought he could fetch a good price. I came from Kazdel. I can find someone who doesn't matter to us where you're from, slave. Say you're 
Higashinese. What? Say your Higashinese for all we care, <laughs> as long as someone buys you out. I'm just checking if you've got a tail. You never know where these mercs get their goods. I promise you he's clean. Better not be messing with me. Cash or barter. Ain't gonna live long enough for money to mean anything. Give me some good weapons. You're the boss. He's second rate at best. They'll net you two blades freshly cast. How about you take another look with your eyes open this time? You can dress him up as a first rate, but it won't change anything. If you don't like your offer, feel free to get lost. And put that machete of yours away. This is the scar market you're in. Right, I'd say threatening people in a place that's selling slaves might just get you killed faster. <laughs> can, can you throw in more? I was out on the Lithuanian border before I got back. I've got first-hand intel about the whole war in the corp. Well, here's something for nothing. Careful what you spew out of that mouth if you want to stay alive here. Mouthing around, you have valuable first-hand intel. You want to guess where that'll get you? Leave the goods and scram. You're holding up the line. Ugh. Not happy? Drown your sorrows in the bar. Our boss, Gar I, brews one heck of a drink. It doesn't matter if you can't pay your tab. They'll take your weapons as collateral, Mark. One more thing. Where do you run our, your bounty board? I'm here to strike it rich. The bar folk will be happy to inform you. Sarkaz swearing. The Merc, the Merc stares around this floating hub. Hidden behind the, the giant subterranean hollow beneath Kazdel. Amidst the bones of the slaves, the faint yet constant rumble of lava and bursts of originium dust can be heard rising from beneath the market. Eyeing the rugged path behind him, the mercenary recalls the perils he faced to reach here from the surface and shudders. Just how many people are there in that goddamn atom? Enough, enough to break your fall if you jumped. Welcome to Scar Market, Greenhorn. You'll love it here. What's the deal over there? Why the crowd? Probably another big name just rolled up back into town. Aren't you here to strike it, Rich? Go on, then. I'd rather keep my horns out of all of that mess. The Merc vaguely makes out a pale white figure flitting throughout the chaotic gloom on the street. White clothes? You don't see that every day in Kazdel. Oh? You're injured. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> You're... Hmm? The last time I was here, it was someone... It was someone handling transactions. Uh, yes, you're referring to my grandfather. He never stopped bragging about how he fought you and lived. Surprised you'd remember him. In the good sense, though, that means he wasn't lying all this time. It must have been 60 years ago by now. General Th Theresis? Theresis? Already? How sad that nothing here has changed at all. I imagine her highness... I imagine with her highness here, too. There will be no more violence this time, eh? Even if things get bloody, eventually you'll leave, but we'll always be here, General. We'll always have business, so long as Kazdel's unrest never rests. Even now, I remember one t thing my grandpa <clears throat> mentioned in his boasts. He said to you, it's the land of Kazdel that needs us. Rhesus looks at the slaves, then their heads lowered in their cages. He draws his sword. War and turmoil have necessitated this trade over a century. This scar market. You just break them out? G General, I... Provided you can reach the surface alive, take a fresh look at Kazdel. Much of what you know will soon change. All Sarkaz will be part of this change. All? Us too? Yes, I'm not inclined to explain our vision to the likes of you, but I will stay here for a while longer and wait for her return. Until then, I welcome you mercenaries to challenge me, just as 60 years, 60 years ago. I'll take you to Kazdel, willingly or otherwise. His voice isn't loud, but every Sarkaz present hangs onto his every word. The mixed blood Sarkaz stands alone, no retinue, no army, armed only with an ordinary looking longsword, casually held in the hand that wields it. His steely gaze pierces through the dim of the street, 
settling calmly in the direction of the only person he cares for. I hate that lava, lava bubbling sound. It was actually driving me a little crazy. Oh, Teresa. Oh, this is the queen? You can dismiss the mercenaries in ambush. No doubt they're your most trusted men. This is out of my respect for the king of Sarkaz. None aside from the general can claim to know your true motives, after all. Your highness, do you truly believe this can change the fate of Sarkaz? That you're not just another ill-fated hero caught in the cycle of hope and torture, failure, torture. Once the dust has all settled, your answer will come naturally. Following that pyrrhic victory, we built from a Jesus. We built from zero a moving city, the great nomad of Sarkaz soil, for over a century now. We can evade catastrophes and foreign armies. Our development has finally reached a point of basic self-sufficiency. But it's so f far from enough. The storm has long been brewing on the horizon, but we were too oblivious, like a burden beast too slow to react, too old to move. Your Highness must be referring to that war between Lithanian and Gaul. Surely you too are aware of the magnitude of that war. Corsica, I even secretly hired our royal court casters as his consultants. But despite a period of seclusion, Lithanian's Witch King thwarted Gaul's offenses with his opening move. And now, Ursus and Victoria have also declared war on Gaul. These present empires... Wait! What was I... Which one was I just playing that was talking about that? I don't remember. These... Oh! The Break the Ice one! They were just talking about the Gaul War where it, like, disappeared after. These present empires display a might so far removed from the enemy 130 years ago against which we staked all Kazdel just to barely prevail. That was already a victory in name only. If Kazdel must no now be thrust into the same situation, how could it possibly end? It is for this end that you wish to establish the military commission of Kazdel. Yet the old aristocrats of the royal court grow resentful, refusing to relinquish their sumptuous city lives and viewing this as an attempt to challenge their privileges. A century of peace is enough for certain memories to slip their minds. So what made you deign to come here in person? Do you see the scar market as the royal court for the bottom feeders? Where the likes of us gape by and make merry? My only hope is for more sarcas to join us and resist the voices that refuse to embrace change. Resist? Perhaps your highness meant terrorize and purge. What I want is a reform, not a slaughter. So what's the reward? The Scar Market's not a real royal court. What we have is... What we have with the mercenaries is partnership, not fealty. Without com compensation, no one will work for us. Reward? Are the spoils of war not enough? Are the riches, power, or food that should have gone to the hungry people not enough to sate your appetite? You claim to provide shelter and a livelihood to, for countless Sarkaz warriors with your rhetoric of justice. Yet, I can almost hear their bones crunch as you squeeze them dry of profit. Sorry, but this, in this business, we eat people whole <laughs> and chew on their bones. Garai, you two are Sarkaz. You two are part of Kazdel. While Teresa cannot see what expression lies beyond Skarai's mask, his emotions are clear as day before his per pitch black crown. No commoner in Kazdel, not uh, ever dare to. No commoner in Kazdel would ever dare to defy the royal court. But in his emotions, all Teresa sees is fervor and bloodlust. You won't refuse. Ah, why would I? Do you think I'm scared they'll get take revenge on me? The royal court's no mystery to me. Your highness knows that plenty well. Let me say, you've promised me, no doubt, the best reward I can ask for. We thrive on chaos, and I can see the level of chaos you will bring upon Kazdel. The fact that the fact that you've kept the name Scar tells me that <laughs> your ideas haven't changed. Like you said, the nation of Terra have grown the nations of Terra have grown tremendously in power over the last century. We could throw more revenants into the soul furnace and stoke its flames, but it'll not close that gap. So why force the people, who aren't really of the same race, to band together 
call themselves the Sarkaz and build a giant target called Kazdel. The war between the four superpowers has proven that other Terra of nations can accept our existence as mercenaries, and that's where Scar Market comes in. And your highness surely knows that we've become a community, a town, because many of us could never fit <clears throat> into the elitist bloodline-obsessed royal court. In all these years, I may have helped just as many Sarkaz find a new way of life as the six heroes, if not, even more. And I'm not the least bit ashamed to say it, your highness, king of Sarkaz. Teresa doesn't reply. All she offers is a faint smile at the Cyclops. Ah, it suddenly occurs to Skarai that this king of Sarkaz belongs to no royal court and represents no bloodline. Her sole aim is to persuade the Sarkaz who are unwilling to believe that Kazdel can be built, some of whom have even committed crimes for this cause, to believe once more. But is she enough to break free from this cycle of tragic failure? From the ending he foresaw? Come to think of it, there's one thing I don't get, your highness. I might have agreed to help you, but why didn't you and General Theresis Simply burn this place to the ground before the day's end. I would have little chance of winning if you decided to do so. Just like you did 60 years ago. A minute ago, you described Kazdel as nothing but a target, and that you want another way for the Sarkaz to live. One that would have them... Jesus. Have them depend on other nations. Yes. So tell me, in your prophetic visions, have you seen Kazdel's destruction? Have you seen my death? Theresis's death? and the dest destruction of all that you stand against? And what about yourself? How do you behold your death? A slow and agonizing death by oropathy? Slain in battle on foreign soil? Or drowned in a sea of plots and conspiracies? Have you ever left this place and seen Kazdel as it is now? Have you ever truly seen the future? This is your way of asking for a prophecy. I don't give handouts, but for your highness, I'll consider a discount. Such nerve. No wonder you were able to claw your way out of the bleakness and rebuild this mercenary's paradise. But I'll pass her on the prophecy. Prophecies and fate have no value. It's getting late. I look forward to your return to Kazdel. He watches her go and heaves a long heaves a long sigh only when even her footsteps footsteps fall from your shot. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Foresight prophecies? His own death? He bought his coffin this very morning. <laughs> okay, so that beginning part was him seeing the future then. Tally up the losses. Boss, the slaves. Set them free. They're bound to get tangled up in the scar market after the war begins anyway. At most, we lose out on the pocket change. Did anyone take on General Theresis and survive? Yes, I've noted them all down. Take them to the supplies for a little reward. They've got real balls. <laughs> when you're done, take them to the bar entrance and kill them all in front of everyone. Send their heads to General Theresis as an apology. Got it. Send their awards to whatever family and friends they have as bereavement. Now, every merc looking to make a living in the scar market, I don't want to see anyone trying funny shit on my turf. That's funny. He heads alone to the bar, the tags on his cloak jangling in the steps. He stands prominently in the crowd, watching as the blades take the light from the mercenary's eyes. Still, no one fights back. Utter disappointment. Drinks are on the house tonight, both to celebrate the two highnesses bar sparing your lives, and to celebrate the huge gig you've just landed. Your objective is in Kazdel. Get your shit ready. Soon... You're all going to be in the city. Sorry, my throat is really dry. Secret entrance of Scar Market, Kazdel. You've been quiet for some while now, Teresa. Are you hesitating? No, I have confidence in you. A reshuffle of the War Council is inevitable. It's just... I've been thinking about the city's future. War won't stop itself at Gaul. Our pace has fallen too far behind. Corsica, I command... And what? 
course he I commands an indomitable fleet. What a weird sentence. An indomitable fleet of dreadnoughts in the guard battalions. The Mad King of Lithanian has more than his arts in his arsenal to affect Gaul's failure. The industrial might of both Ursus and Victoria in the throes of a large-scale war has surpassed our imaginations. Many assume to know war like the back of their hands simply by living long enough through it. If our concept of war still lingers on the great battle for a century ago, from a century ago, then we have drastically underestimated how quickly wars can nourish empires and fuel dictatorships. This is exactly why we need a military commission. It's more than that, Theresis. I know. When the day comes when the Sark has wished to live on, if a brittle, creaking city is all they have to call their own, it'll be far from enough. Do you remember the idea I proposed back when Kalsit was designing the city's blueprints for us? Babel. To transcend the borders of race and nation, to echo far and wide in our ideals, is our epics. Founded by a Sarkaz. Sarcasm. <laughs> That's why I keep thinking whenever I say that word. We will prepare Kazdel for the coming crisis. Strive to eradicate the poverty and disease that have plagued them for a millennia. And send a message to all of Terra. There will come a future when we all stand as one. The Sarkaz too are part of Terra's destiny. This is not the first Theresis has heard of her idea. Apart from the dame who left after helping build the nomadic city of Kazdel many years ago. He alone knows the true belief to the, of the current king of Sarkaz. Kazdel won't accept this babble. You and I both know that well. It's but a dream of attempting a, to subvert reality. Yes, for now at least, we can't be talking of such grand ideals while even our own affairs are slipping away from us. It's my hope this babble will come can come become can't come become <laughs> a part of Kazdel Theresis. Are you prepared then? As I said before, it's not just the other nations that will oppose you. Kazdel and the Sarkaz cling to their hatred will also stand against you. It's cruel to force them to forgive and forget. For prosecu persecution of the Sarkaz is not history. The ancient hatred is what drives many to survive until this day. I am the king of Sarkaz. The responsibility is all mine to bear. I must show them a way out of this. I see. Then go. Do what you will. Theresa, I still do not approve of your vision, but I do support your decision. And the future military commission will too. If your gaze is set too far to see what lies before you, then I shall sweep away all that obstructs you at the moment, just as always. I know. Come, let's go home. Kazdel still needs us for what's about to happen. Oh yes, Scar, I mentioned the prophecy again as I was leaving. The signs of a pessimistic fate. And your reaction? I don't care. Agreed. Damn, Kazdel. A strange yet familiar name. Many from this great land see it as a pit from which devils crawl. A terrible place to be avoided at all costs. Well, to the Sarkaz, the name only invokes equally conflicted emotions. Whoa. That's cool. <laughs> Despite generations of Sarkaz passing on that Kazdel is the Sarkaz's homeland, an outsider might wonder if they mean the city or the entirety of those lands. Perhaps only they themselves know. It never struck me on the way out just how high this wall is. Oh well, at least I can go home alive now. That means I'm pretty lucky. That man in the scar market, that was General Teresus. The first of the city's founders, the hero of that legendary campaign. <sighs> If I had the courage to ask him to take me in, maybe I could have just... Uh, I'm dreaming again. Sit atop the top of the high wall, experiencing for the first time a new lease on life. Few of Kazdel's civilians, civilian Sarkaz, save for those children who haven't yet cottoned onto the fear of death, ever climb onto the city wall. The tremendous pipes and tubes piled high can even be called a wall. 
The intricately tangled forest of Reginium spikes that take the lives of anyone who loses their footing, but it also serves as a haven for pilferers and mercenaries to stash their goods. Smugglers and vagrants cross through the, the dark underground, peeking out from the tunnels and drains the mines and factories, scuttling from one corner of the city to another. The life the slave once knew. The general gave me a fresh start, so what should I do from now on? He gazes at the furnace, burning and smoldering far away, teeming with indiscernible workers as they carry originium, steel, dirt, and stones into the hearth. To Kazdel the Nomad, its flames bring motion, while the molten metal that flows out adds new appendage to the city. For a whole century, it's belched its incessant black smoke. None know whether it's ash or originium dust, dust. Some say it's a bitter, it's the bitter anger and anguish as the revenants exhale their last breaths. Witchcraft altars hang high in the sky. Oh, damn! That's what these are. That's cool. Hang high in the sky, intermittently flashing their blinding rays. The slave was heard many dif different versions of the urban legend. The most frightening version claims that the royal court's casters work day and night on the altars, watching everything and listening to every conversation in the city. Maybe you could try my luck at the factories, too. Doesn't matter what else. I made it back alive. It's been months since I left. I don't know how many of my friends are still alive. That's rough, buddy. The nomadic city of Kazdel. Kazdel. <laughs> Oh, it's the dude! Sarkaz swearing. Mother <laughs> What happened here? Why are all the doors open and the furniture smashed? Pull top. You're back. Pull top? It's you. What are you doing here? Where'd you get that ornament? Something big is happening. Royal court nobles are being dragged out of their houses and killed by mercenaries, appearing from nowhere, while the city guards do nothing. Laws have been sneaking into the empty houses, and boy, have we dredged up some good stuff. How are you still alive, though? Word got out that you wanted to leave the city and find your own way, and after so long, we all assumed you died out there. <laughs> you won't believe my luck. First, I was left to die without food or water. Then I was taken to the Scar Market. But guess what? General Teresa saved my life. The General himself. Then, on my way home, I ran into this guy with a halo over his head, calling himself a messenger and he bought he brought me all the way back to the city wall so i've decided to change my name to good luck starting today you guys can forget that lousy old name of mine <laughs> a guy with a halo a sancta and then the general you sure learned how to lie good luck believe me or no believe me or don't but either way today is a fresh new start for me i'm gonna be go be a miner i looted an a nasher's house earlier today <laughs> and found some hot air balloons want to launch me on one and put that luck of yours to good use i'm in well that was fast man it feels good to be home good luck glances around at the people swarming the street this is the life he knows if he wants to survive the city will always offer him away thank you fate and thank you general good for him he escaped his possible death or enslavement Oh, time to fight. Okay, you guys remember how to fight? <laughs> oh, Too damn. Too bad I some people just can't live and let live. Flying Boots Mercenary. Fast-moving mercenaries capable of evading physical attacks, loses physical dodge, and F against the stabilizer chain. Okay, well, I'm just going to use you to block Forwards. then. What? Gabo. Ready? 
ready to heal. Here, I know what you're thinking. What are you waiting for? Game over for you. How's that? You can go do something else. <laughs> Jesus, she's so strong now. Come on. I mean, I'm super high leveled, so that's not even a challenge. Autumn, 1031. Oh, this is a year later then? The nomadic city of Kazdel. Kazdel. <laughs> it's funny that it describes itself that way. Hey, look, let me through already. Hey, no shoving. You want a good spot? I'll trade you mine for some high purity originium out of the mines. Isn't this the dude that was the slave trader? It is! Don't just grab the leaflet out of my hands. Ugh. The blood all over you stinks. Can't help it when you're breaking into dead people's houses. Linganes. Let's how that's how you read the word, right? Where's Ling Linganes? Gal. Oh, where's Gal? How the sh <laughs> How the fuck should I know where Gaul is? Hey, what's with that attitude? Shh, the Highness in the Royal Court, Big Shots, are discussing something in the chamber. I heard it's about reorganizing the city. Haven't you noticed all the extra guards on the streets recently? So quiet down a bit. Ugh, weather, it's real stuffy today. I have some atrocious heartburn right now. It is decided. The military commission will replace the war council in assisting the king of Sarkaz, Teresa, in decision making related to Kazdel's military and political affairs. The military commission will be the sole administration of Kazdel, and none will have the authority to issue commands to the Sarkaz in the royal court's name. All present have already received the details of this resolution. To the royal court leaders who still wish to cling on to the war council, know that the military commission of Kazdel will become the final bastion of the Sarkaz, our eternal fortress and the usher of a new order. Are there any further questions? Oh, it's... Wait, isn't this the new character? Ascalon? Your highness appears more haggard than you did yesterday. Please look after your health. No military commission is worth it. It comes to your cost of our, your highness's health. Lacamarlene, thank you. Lacamarlene, what a name. I know how hard you've been working for this day. And I also know how Kazdel today views the banshees of the convalus. But before I state your our position, I encountered a lost envoy in the lin liches? Liches? I don't know, on my journey here. He entrusted me with a letter for your highness. That he couldn't even find the road here. Let this be proof of the immense changes Kazdel has undergone. A letter from a Lithanian. If things are going as expected, your highness's messenger would still not have received any news from the Cyclops. Cyclops. Cyclop! Rather than waiting for the response from deep in the blizzard. Should we not hear how the Lyches of Lithanian answer? You're right. It has been a very long time since the Sarkas were able to truly unite. Oh? The ornate calligraphy upon the letter turns into silken threads that float above the paper and weave into the shape of a familiar figure. A magical note? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Vermont, a lich who has long resided in Lithanian. It appears that he is now the first scribe of the liches. It seems that the arts the practiced by the liches of Lithanian have seen some stylistic changes. Oh, he appears rather excited. 
Why is there only image, but no sound? Well, the Lich Envoy did suggest to me that he was rather vexed with refining his master's words, but never did I imagine that he would simply erase all the sound. In short, Fremont apologizes on behalf of the Liches. They're enthralled as ever by their quest for knowledge, and are therefore unable to afford the distraction of making the long journey here. But if Kazdel were ever in need of their knowledge, they should be ha they would happily throw wide the gates to their no temple for the people that they have chosen. I am sure that with your abilities, your highness can understand Fremont's <coughs> attitude on the matter. From <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, from his image alone. To me, it appears as though he is sensitive to drastic change, as has always been his want. Won't? His won't? What the fuck? Oh, weird. Uh, yes. There's another letter from the Fremont. One addressed directly to the general. Might I remind you, Lecker Marlene, that you are nobody's messenger. People ask me in silence for my support. You have not yet expressed where the Banshee Corp stands. I assume that we have reached an understanding in the course of our reminiscing yesterday. The Banshees will not participate. We are still recovering from the wounds inflicted in the, by the past war. Perhaps other Sarkas will. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Why does it keep going. Is it back on yet? Oh. Hopefully it didn't fuck up in the recording, it just went black. If Kazdel <clears throat> calls on the aid of the Banshees once more, then I will give the same promise as Vermont. The Banshees will be there. But until that day, you will find us willing unable. Willing but unable. Naturally, I myself will render what little assistance I am able to give from this day onwards. That's more than we can ask for. Thank you, Lock Marine. Bakura Maline. What a name. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> you are welcome, Your Highness. You know where I stand. For the past hundred years, I have always stood by the decisions you have made. I can only hope that your brother does not blame us for the w for watching from the sidelines. Next, Nor Lord Nezalem. The... N okay, I'm not even gonna try. Najera King. You were once the leader of the War Council and the mentor of Theresis and I. What is your opinion on these many proposals? Where do the other council members that you represent stand on the matter? Whoa! What a scary dude! Have you discussed them with the Dumasti cluster? Okay. <laughs> if you pops up again, I'll say it. But, so far I'm not going to say it. They have long since taken root in Kazdel. Under many different names and faces, we have had many conversations over the years, and they have no objections. Okay. He looks, like, poorly photoshopped into the picture. What? This is the... Okay, I'll say it. This is the worst model I've seen in this game. Then I have no objections of my own. Like, it looks cool visually, but it really does just look like they poorly, like, photoshopped it. Because you see, like, a white outline around him. It just looks like bad Photoshop. <laughs> because once we get to the next character, I'll show you. Your Highness need not worry about the bureaucratic hurdles, policy efficient in imperfections, or, or enforcement mechanisms. Where I stand is also where the other members of the Council stand. We all know what we truly long for. A turnabout, a change, a banner. Go, do as you will. Yeah, like, he doesn't look like that. Like, some parts are dark. Like, right there is dark. But then right here, there's no outline. So, I guess it's also a side character. I'll I'll leave it with that, too. It's not really, like... Because he's, like, a character that has a name. It's just, the other dude just doesn't really... We will, Najir King. I promise you that. Nez Salem. Oh, yeah, he does, I guess. Weird. I don't know. Just at the stand stagnant and dulled war can take on a new form in your hands. I notice you have not said a word this entire meeting. Sanguinark of Vampires. To take the War Council and the century of history behind it, and sweep it under the into the gutter alongside the exalted Heroic Age, 
and what little triumphs within. Is that the general's decision? It is our decision. Speak your mind, Ducarel. Ducarel lowers his gaze. Teresa's white skirt is modded, modeled with many blackened bloodstains. The sanguine arc is highly attuned to such matters. He senses the blood of the lowly, the foul stench of fallen descendants, and the murky taint of royal court members who willingly debase themselves. I thank your highness for purifying the filthy blood that I so abhor in my stead. But never have I needed to hide my requests behind honeyed words, such as it is been for every king of the past, and so it will be for you. The military commission is merely an attempt to hide Sarkar's witchcraft and blood behind a more modern, more efficient name. Truth be told, I feel like this is insignificant. More than insignificant. It is simply not necessary. You reject the proposal? On behalf of the vampire court? Duca Rel... Uh, Duca Rel glances at Teresus, but Teresus remains indifferent to him. Time has left almost no trace on the mixed blood Sarkaz. He stands steadfast by Teresa's side, the same nameless warrior who stood by the seamstress a century ago. His eyes never fall on the vampire. Not a rejection, no, I am merely expressing some minor frustrations about this meeting. You are great and powerful, all of you are. How long has it been since so many members of the royal court have gathered here in Kazdel? Not to mention that it was you who defeated that foolish coalition in the prior age and wrestled, wrestled the future into our own hands. Our own hands. That's how he should talk, but I'm not going to do that voice because that's way too much. <laughs> Before personally establishing the War Council. And now you wish to personally change this council? Why? Look about you at the other dignitaries in this chamber. The Banshee... I don't... The Nazra... You have a long reach to consensus. The only obstacle to your military commission is myself and the vampires. You had foist some ridiculous title upon me before forcing all vampires to bow down to your commission. When did you learn this political trickery that those Victorians Lithanians so love? Why not just take my head here and now and slaughter the vampires within the city's walls? This meeting is not convened to pr prosecute anyone. Was it not? It was convened to discuss how to bring Kazdel into a new age. A new age. <laughs> In that so-called Age of Six Heroes, the songs love to praise. What I saw was bloodthirst and violence. I had thought that when I arrived in Kazdel, I would be greeted with the sound of Ulysses wailing. But what did I see instead? I saw the coalition routed. Witchcraft enough to cover the land and fill the skies crushed the enemy front. The power of the Sarkaz shook the earth. I felt amazement. I felt excitement. Spurred by my passion, I took the head of the Lithanian envoy who had orchestrated the coalition and offered it to the War Council. Nesalem. That war was the true beginning of a new age. I thought you would agree with me. Have you two succumbed to the schemes in politics and shut your ears to the echoes of the abyss? The abyss has no place for you, Daka Real. <laughs> Do not drag me into your tantrum. Ah, my apologies. But I am curious. What position did they offer the esteemed Sarkaz Master of War in the military commission that has rendered even you so short-sighted? All I await is the next war. And what war would that be? If it pleases you, your highness. Come, Dakarel. I will show you. Teresa nods her head in silent approval. The King of Sarkaz's emotions envelop the entire chamber and all the members of the royal court. Through the eyes of through the king's eyes, they see ruination and grief. They see the century-old order that the Gaulish Empire so painstakingly maintained within the core region obliterated by the combined forces of Ursus, really? Victoria and Lithanian. They see Ligonos, Ligonis, the capital of the world, doomed to never again appear on a map of Terra. Whoa, my voice cracked. Whoa! These those present recall the campaign that reduced Kazdel to dust, but in is not over yet over. 
an even further future in even further fantasy and even further possibility. It is no longer a story to reflect upon. Rather, it is a speculation, a deduction, a prediction, and a verdict. But none question it, for all the possibilities must be treated equally, even for, for the one they see. And its ending is so equally significant and indisputable as any other. It is a change, a turning point in history, a divergence of fate. A crucial war looms on the horizon. It will span from now into the distant future, impacting every sarcasm in all of Terra. All present has seen their positions in that war, the roles that they wish to play. You should understand now, vampire. You should understand what these visions mean. Or perhaps you have begun to grow weak and feeble as you list. In the short span of a hundred years, you were once a warrior. I cannot deny that. But are you saying that a new and reborn Kazdel requires the royal court to relinquish its former authority? Close, but not quite. The new Kazdel will no longer require the royal court's former authority. It will be more modern, more efficient, Dokorel. How can the Sarkaz <clears throat> speak of unity while you continue to indulge in your noble bloodlines? Will it come from the rule of the royal court? You may still rule over your own court and maintain the power and prestige you hold among the Sarkaz, but the vampire court must yield to the military commission. I promise you this in Teresa's name. When the age that you witness comes, Kazdel will no longer be a single dot upon the map. It was once more than just a city, and so it shall be once more. It seems I have spoken on turn. Please continue, Your Highness Teresa. The aftermath of ongoing conflicts, enough to reshape current power dynamics, will engulf us all. It may come in 50 years, in 10, or perhaps even tomorrow. Kazdel cannot escape it. Demosti and I both saw the visions of the campaign that will destroy Lingones. Is that what it was? Lingones? Yeah, Lingones. High efficiency command systems made possible by Originium Arts. High speed battleships that can break through front lines. Maneuver tactics that can mobilize entire legions. New advancements are applied to the battlefield as we speak. Their capacity for destruction is surpassing our innate instincts rooted in our bloodlines. What worries me more is the fact that we will still find we will still find fellow Sarkaz among the countless casualties of war. Gaul employed royal court casters in the liches of the Lithanian are killing each other in battle, while certain Wendigo is spilling the blood of his fellow Sarkaz to prove his loyalty to the Ersten Sar. As for the Sarkaz, mercenaries sent to the front lines as arts fodder. They won't even be counted in any nation's casualty statistics. The Sarkaz massacre one another in wars we have no stake in, regarded as disposable goods to be abandoned without care by the leaders of those wars. For the sake of keeping pace with those changing times, in these changes, in this changing time, the Sarkaz must once again gather around the furnace. And if necessary, the power to dominate the war must lie in our hands. Theresa looks at Teresa, waiting for her opinion. But Teresa does not speak. Her eyes placid as before. We will plunder the other nations and wrest their most profound secrets from them. We were once the proud Tikas, forced to become the Sarkas and derided as devils. Because the Outlanders feared us, it is an ancient fear rooted deep in their hearts. Let us remind them. Let us show all of Terra our history and legend that have been either forgotten or falsified. The Sarkaz are not weak. We do not need others to save us from our fate. On the contrary, we will dictate the fate of Terra. Dictate how this land should move forward. The details of our plan have been delivered to all present through the runic arts of the Banshees. Daka Rail. Do you still hold doubt? No. Exceptional work, Theresis. Set aside a seat on the military commission for the Crimson Court. I. It appears that our non king 
has not yet grown addled with age, but as to whether or not he could usher in such a grand feast, warriors need not die in a blaze of glory. That is a, a vulgarity only chased by those who seek fame. Oh, I nearly forgot you were still here, Lacamerlean. Lacamerlean. I have made myself abundantly clear from the start, Prince Duca Rail. I need only... I'm probably saying all the names wrong, but... Oh well. <laughs> I need only silently observe your enthusiastic attempt at self-expression. How pitiful it is to look upon such a shabby little court. I'll cherish your elegies. Then this is a... I, this I promise you. When death comes for you, the Lord of the Banshees will sing you an elegy. Delivered to you by the night wind. Set aside your chatter for another time. Seems their highnesses still have matters to discuss. The other members of the War Council will wish to know their decisions. Ducarel, Lacamerlin, and you, Damasti, Damasti, disguised outside the door with me. Nashirer King nods his head towards Teresa. The other two members of the Royal Court do not bid the King farewell. They simply follow the, the Nashirer King out of the chamber. This one's so dramatic. After the meeting's end, Teresa <coughs> stays by Teresa's side, standing silently. He knows that she will be expecting an answer from him. I mean, you never mentioned that you would announce the plans for war to the royal court. You do not refute me either. Would I have been able to refute anything? Uh, you are well aware of what I think. If you wanted to argue against it, any of it, you would have done so a few years ago. For now, I have them by the reins. But it's not just them. This entire city hungers for war. I'll prevent matters from heading down the worst possible path, lest the prospects of Terra's continued existence become infinitesimally small. You must be quick about it. I will. What does Fermont's letter say? As Theresis opens the envelope, the writing vanishes before his eyes. Yet, the message has already etched itself indelibly into his mind. He has surmised that... He surmised... He has surmised what would transpire during that meeting rather accurately. He has given his opinion on some matters alongside a reminder. Do not place all your coming hopes in one basket. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Finally, the normal relaxing music. <laughs> the nomadic city of Castell. Castell. Snappy civilian. You with that babble? Ha! <laughs> Don't count on the military commission to look after you all. Oh? We're here to help you. Help us. My parents died at the hands of the Lithanians. You got some nerve. What, not scared of me? We knew what to expect when we came here. Just need some getting used to. Besides, our captain warned us not to agitate the locals. You looking down on me? <laughs> Mother fu- Uh-oh. Huh? What the hell is this? Let me go! Who's throwing him around? Ha 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 ha! it. Welcoming wave from Monitor. Do not harm him, but do make him leave. Doctor calls it? I said not to deviate from our planned route. Even if it is to treat the wounded along the way. Sorry, Dr. Kaltzit. No matter. You handled it well. We reached our destination. Oh, shit. I just dropped my mouse. <laughs> Welcome to Babel. Babylon. Babel office, Kazdal. Did you manage to retrieve all of our stray colleagues? Yes. All's well with them. The construction of Babel's facilities... Is proceeding smoothly. The school that you were so looking forward to is already complete. Yeah, I heard that the unbeatable Dr. Kultzit had not too long ago been turned down. Perhaps even kicked out. I did not foresee such a direct refusal. I'm not surprised at all. To be honest, too many carts sarcasm. The invitation of the king is barely worth the paper it's printed on. On the other hand, our connections with Sargon and Rim Billiton have <coughs> delivered good news. As for Columbia... Some, some scientists have proposed a technology exchange program. They have their eyes on the ancient Sarkaz witchcraft, while we need their latest mobile farms. 
took us centuries for efforts to share an equally an equal dialogue with those powers. The results speak for themselves. You are creating new history, Teresa. Thank you, Kotsit. <sighs> but I can tell you've had a lot on your mind recently. The military commission has been formally established. Babel's exist existence will spark yet another near irreconcilable irreconcilable conflict in what? In where? Kazdel. Oh yeah, I guess that's where we're at. Our staff comes from different races and nations, but how should they live alongside the Sarkaz? Sar Sar if your efforts soothe enmity, enmity and prejudice, instead of become a fuse to spark new conflict anew, how does your highness, what does your highness plan to do? We cannot, if we cannot even eliminate prejudice and hatred within the walls of Kazdel, how can Babel hope to achieve equality for the Sarkaz throughout all of Terra? There will be members of the military commission posted to Babel soon. They will ensure the safety of our people. This will also serve as a warning to some. Babel is backed by both Theresis and me. Oh, right. Did I ever tell you that how I met a Sancta messenger, Kalset? Strange. The Sancta do not generally dare to approach the borders of Kazdel. Was this why your highness suddenly disappeared this morning? Or this afternoon? Was that obvious? I thought Licker Moline <clears throat> had me covered. Lord of the Banshees clearly tried, but judging from the results, she isn't the best pick for clerical work. Well, what of that Sancta messenger? He was getting water from the river. We struck up a conversation. We chatted about many things. History, peace, hatred. Our viewpoints did not align on those on most things, but I could sense in him wisdom and intelligence beyond his ears. He had thoughts concealed within his heart, ones even he did not know of. And so, he used the power of the King of Sarkaz on the Sancta. I simply wished to know what this fated encounter meant. And what did it mean? It's still hard to say, but I will I but while I was looking at his soul, I felt that perhaps we are not so alone, calls it. Many of this land <clears throat> many of this land are doing all they can to pursue hope. Hope's big and small. Hope's bright and beautiful. Well yeah, everyone has a dream of something. When you're done dreaming, you're kinda just dead a little. You need a Always have something to look forward to in your future. It's important. Ugh, that hurt. Those people nuts or something? I just wanted to get a few nice things for myself. Never even heard of any babble. He steadies himself against the wall, gasping for air as his vision begins to blur. As he floods his limbs, weighing him down. Through his blurred vision, he sees another in front of him fall to the crazed attacker's blades. He knows how he will be next. I refuse to die here. You are me, you bastards, out of the way. Using the last of his strength to barrel his way out. The only reason he needs it is solid ground. All he sees is black. Are you alright? Were you trying to save me just now? There's so much blood. Why does it feel like I'm the one saving you? Hold on, I'll bring you to Babel. Our doctors will there can help you. <sighs> I'm still alive. He has good luck indeed. <laughs> Who would have thought that those lunatics would would decide to attack innocent bystanders in broad daylight to get that babble. I don't know how the others are faring. Hey, hey, stay with me. I still don't know your name. I'm good luck, huh? For the first time, he regrets giving himself this name. <laughs> I mean, he's alive. So he's good luck. Jesus. He's alive, so he has good luck. That's proof enough for you, bro, that you chose the right name. <laughs> <sighs> that was a lot of fun. I'm excited to read more. I still don't have any clue what's going on. That's it for this video. That was a lot of fun. I don't know what's going on at all. Um, I don't know how the doctor gets involved in this, but it is cool to see one that's... I think it's the past? Is this like a prequel or something then? I don't know. It's still cool to read about. Yeah, what they're saying at the end though, it's, it's important to have like a hope of something and like a dream of something even if it like even if it seems impossible because it's important to not give up <laughs> and a lot of people just give up on themselves or their dreams or whatever and because of it they 
stagnate in their own life a little bit and they that's usually how like depression stuff starts too a lot of times not all the time um i had no hopes for my future until more recently so it changes you you really do start thinking more positively after you start to dream of something for yourself um that's it for this one though so if you like this video like and subscribe i love having you guys around if you want to talk about arc knights and maybe even some other games the link for the discord will be in the description hop on in i like to talk to you guys um if you want to support the channel and buy me a coffee my ko-fi will also be in the description other than that though you better have a good night and bye bye <laughs>